We are now going to call upon Dr. Anayat of the Heidelberg PMA to give us his presentation, Beyond Printing, Emergent Materials and the Next Interface. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a tough time for a speaker to talk to a crowd which is already embedded with a lot of information in their brain. And my topic is also a bit different. In fact, when I was told to make a presentation during this print summit, I was asking myself what I should speak. Then I recollected an event which happened immediately after Drupa. Again, thanks to BMPA, they gave an opportunity exactly three years back called Drupa Demystified. Where I was trying to discuss with a concept on industrial convergence, where we were trying to talk about how the various industries are going to converge and how this is going to transform the print industry. And where we were trying to talk more on the convergence of media, medicine, and manufacturing, those who have attended those sessions may be remembering that. In fact, that was basically proposed by a professor, Christopher Bernard from Nottingham University in UK, but he was not sure what role printing is going to do in that. So I was trying to supplement it, and that is the way we went together and worked. And today I can see a lot of convergence has already happened. The basic purpose of this presentation is, after hearing this, when you go back, you should look printing in a little different way. So to do that, what I thought is, let us look around us how other industries are evolving. And it may have some influence in our industry too. So the initial 33 slides, I don't need to talk much because the slide itself will tell you. Rather, I am not an expert also on many of the concepts which I collected from various sources. And I am thankful to two of my colleagues, uh, Professor uh, uh, Ard Hubler and uh, Blaine Brownwell. He's an architect from US, Minnesota University. So I try to touch upon six concepts today. I start with repurposed materials. Then we will look into a little bit on embedded graphic materials interfacial materials, dual life materials, haptic materials, and repurposed technologies. Only the last point is on repurposed technologies, which we will try to relate it to printing. So the last nine slides related to repurposed technologies. This is house built in the US by an architect, I don't remember his name, I have it, I can read it, that's what I was telling. All from the repurposed materials, waste materials. People thought it cannot come to a certain level, but the house has come to a very, very top class, and today a lot of demand is coming in this line. Completely constructed with a repurposed material. Look at the fan also, you can see. My German colleague must be knowing this. The company called Push from Germany, highly specialized in making furniture out of repurposed materials, basically from paper. 
reused materials. To know more about this, kindly get into the... When I share the slides, you can go to that last uh, disposable office push. You can get into the website and get more information. Again, in another company called VY and LE, like they, they have done a lot of work in repurposed billboard facings. So most of the billboards, it's the most difficult thing to recycle. Today they have taken it to manufacture nice bags and similar items, which you can see. So this is also another trend which is coming up. Recyclable PE paper is uh, very, very popular now in the US. It's called an eco poster. So throughout the streets which you can see, these applications. Get into EcoFlex website, you get more information on EcoFlex. There is a very famous uh, chef, actually, Homero Cantu. He designed uh, a menu card for the a la carte called an edible paper, where you can even uh, cut it and taste it and feel the taste of the menu which you are going to order. So that's the way people started thinking today. Another application is more into the audible textiles. All the old audio cassettes materials which we thought are useless, but this company, the Sonic Fabrics Design Text, they have but two of them. They have collected these materials and they started manufacturing a lot of fantastic textiles. And Design Text, they have a separate section for the neckties made out of audible materials. Mutant materials, look at the Nendo, their website, if you go, you will see how they have utilized these materials to furniture business. My intention is to just to introduce you various industries around us, how they are changing. This is a very, very interesting concept actually. Uh, basically started by a designer, where uh, a designated pattern where bacteria are already injected and it can go up to a minute detail of 200 micron where the color of the hoarding keep on changing six months. So it starts with a normal design and uh, every day you will see a different design. The bacteria comes, dies, goes, new, but the area which you want, which you can really control up to a 200 micron side. Even the fonts, what you can see down that E, U, F, A, this is called the bacteria printed fonts. So they have started very, very uh, environmental friendly concept, but this also, already it is there in the market. And a very, very interesting material called aerogel, a very, very recent innovation. What they have done is the water content is taken out of it from the gel and air is injected. So it's very, very lightweight, but very, very strong. You can see that. Sometimes they call it as a frozen smoke or solid smoke, blue smoke due to its semi-transparent nature and the way light scatters in the material. Another material which is really coming very, very popular and strong in various industries. Now when we look the embedded graphic materials, Mr. Narendra has given me five minutes from him, so by chance if I Go a little extra. I thought you gave it to me. <laughs> no, he already told me. So. <laughs> you see, 3D printed uh, well boards are already in the market now. But basically, most of the results come from US. See the application. But more from the designer side. They have given the idea and that's the way this has come.
it's called a graphic glass, a company called Vector Glass, if you go. What they have done is, air bubbles are injected inside on a controlled way, and they can create any pattern they want. Maybe a company names or designs or everything. So they started writing inside the glass. It's called a graphic glass, they call. So PadLab website, if you go, you can get more information on this. Ombre system, a company, what they have done is they use a lot of physical pixels and uh, arranged it in a different angle so that it can scatter the light in a very, very different way. And that's the way they create whatever designs they want based on the light, how it is scatters on it. Lot of material proxies today. One example is this. It's not a cloth actually, it's a material proxy. They basically used for the wallpapers, which block, I mean, embedded in the uh, concrete. It's called a concrete blonde. There's a company you can look in their website. Another designer, Kinyahara, he did a very interesting design in a hospital in Japan. It, he could see the difference in the patients. The colors he used, the kind of signages he used, the, the percentage of relief what the patients were getting has really increased after this. So even a designer can do this. Interfacial materials, they have come up with a lot of concrete video screens today. Fiber optics is embedded inside and uh, the concrete screen work like, concrete wall work like a screen. Thermochromatic concrete has come now. We are all very, very familiar with the thermochromatic inks. But now thermochromatic concrete is also available. And even you can make, you can see that wall clock, which is based on a thermochromatic effect. It functions. Renewable energy display. This is a UK company. So they have installed this throughout the roads. So which, it's a uh, windmill kind of small concept, but it can light the complete uh, add posters, everything throughout the night without any problem. This is another design. MIT has done a lot of uh, work in the pulp-based computing. Without losing the property of paper, they have done electronic papyrus, that's what they want to talk about. Of course, MIT Media Lab has done a lot of work in this light. Illuminated roof tiles. It's very popular now, where what they do is the company name can be illuminated very easily. So from the any distance, you can display the way you want. Go to the uh, Lambert Campus website, you get more details. Dual life materials. It's a luminous and gravel again where you need to create designs or effects. This has got a lot of, all self-explanatory. I don't need to talk anything. Luminous textile, another application. Water reactive concrete, they have come up. We have water reactive ink, fugitive ink we talk about a lot. So water reactive con concrete which creates designs. pH sensitive textile, it's a new style. You can see the umbrella, when the rain comes, the ch color changes. So. When we talk about haptic material, the touch and feel effect, you see this, uh, a little difficult for me to pronounce that name, maybe Naoto Fukasawa. He's the, that's what I read in the detail. He has designed some packaging where uh, you can really touch and feel what is inside. 
the bananas and the cherries and uh, everything you can feel it. So typical Jew skin they have uh, replicated, duplicated. It's a fussy font. They <laughs> cut. It's a. You can see the feel. It's called a water logo. They have created a surface where uh, it is treated and it behaves like a lotus leaf. So wherever you want, you can create that effect and all the <coughs> logos which you can create through water. Very, very environmental friendly and very effective. Synthetic skin. <coughs> skin bag. No explanation needed. Haptic literacy. Again, another, uh, she's an architect actually. She developed a method to teach the real feel of the material and learn. And she termed it as a haptic literacy. So this is the way the surroundings are changing. So we as a printer, I feel, we should uh, look printing technology in a, as a repurposed technology. What is a repurposed technology, what I want to say is, I just consider uh, uh, printing into three, three phases now. The phase one was more into adding ink on paper, which we are all very familiar and which we do. Phase two is the current approach, which is very popular everywhere. We do a lot of further value additions, talk about UV, spot, drip off, extra color, RGB plus CMYK, the new trend, then tactile effect, all security related. All these are ongoing and market is very strong. But phase three, when you look, the future approach, again, it is going back to the concepts, what we were discussing under BMPA three year back. Manufacturing, medical science, construction, nano, biometrics, electronics, bioprinting, food printing. I, I was seeing a machine, my, my friend sent me the video of that. They used it in a hotel where you can print a food and using an inkjet technology. The way, yes. So this is the way it's going up. And of course, a lot of applications in the microstructuring side. Printed electro, I, I just want to touch upon few points from this because this is one field which is going to play a very, very big role in the coming days. Expected to be a 380 billion US dollar business in printed electronics. This is, I took from my friend's slide because they did the basic research in this side from Technic University Chemnitz. It really started only from 2000 and the way it is growing, if you look, you compare the traditional electronics and the uh, printed electronics, you can see the growth. I, I will show you an S-curve analysis, which was there later. Functional electronic things, conductive, semiconductive, and dielectric things, already we have started printing to create uh, uh, functional uh, electronic gadgets and materials. And some of the applications, if you look, the universe of, uh, universe of printed functionality, if you look, I don't know what is not possible with that. Maybe a printed memory, ROM, WOM, you talk about everything, humidity measures, temperature control system, printed batteries, solar cells, and everything. This is the wide gamut of printing in the coming days. So my dream is, of course, to do it on a conventional machine, it is possible to, maybe on a flexo press, on an offset press or a gravier press, because there are some reasons for uh, uh, how can you do this. And the market prediction was like this earlier, but it has not happened. It was supposed to take a curve like this, but now it is expected to grow maybe from 2018 to 20, 2020 it will take a real steep growth. 
It, I took this from ID Tech website, which you can see. So the new markets with ongoing technology development are printed electronics, memory cards, packaging identification, <coughs> collectible game cards, micropayment and downloading system, advertisement, geo-information, printed paper keyboard, printed electronic, of course, the next technology. So the new world of smart objects, I believe, you can see the applications, one, two, three, four written, maybe on industrial logistics with the long distance reading, single item tagging with short distance reading, private mobile use, private home. Even Nokia was planning. They have not fully got into that, but Nokia want to print their mobile phones using printing technology. So what makes us different is how to repurpose a technology. All these days we were looking printing only to add ink on paper. Now we have to look in a totally different way. So how to repurpose the substance, dimensionality, assimilation, and sense. This is what is going to make us different. So my conclusion, what I feel is, repurposing of technology, material, substance, dimensionality, assimilation, and sense is going to make us different and successful in our business. And this is my, strict, my personal beliefs. Printing will be a part and parcel of all modern innovations. It will be an integral part of medical science, certainly be a major contributor in mechanical manufacturing, will play a crucial role in electronics because smart is coming. Printing technology will remain as the most protective structuring technique. Printing of electronic functions will become an added value. And traditional printing technologies like offset, flexo, gravier, and screen will continue in a more important way. Application will be different. And digital printing will become an additional production support, and that too will grow on its own domain. It's going to happen. So long live printing. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.